All right, so this is the culminating term project for ME405 Mechatronics uh, for winter of 2021. And here in front of me is the two degree of freedom ball and plate balancing system. Uh, this is the top of the platform and located on the top is the resistive touch panel right here. We also have the IMU or inertial measure measuring unit. We also have the two brushed DC motors running at 12 volts and also their optical encoders with a count per revolution of 4,000. Um, looking a little bit closer, you can see that the motor's attached to a sprocket, which is connected to a pulley, which turns another shaft located on the encoder. That also controls the motor arms. Um, so these motors are able to basically lift the platform up and down in one axis and since there's two of them it can control the platform in both axes. Uh, located here on the back is also the Nucleo microprocessor which is used to handle all the computing for the control um, and it's sitting on a custom PCB designed by the instructor of this course Charlie Revan. Uh, connected here is the 12 volt power supply that is used to drive the DC motors and located on the other side is a mini USB cable, which is used to interface with the Nucleo. So this is how we run our terminal, download files, and basically control the Nucleo. So before we get into a demo, I'd like to just start off by saying that I will not be using the ball that came with the hardware kit. Uh, this ball is a little bit too bouncy and also too light, um, and it can't be detected by the touch panel very well. Um, because of this, there's a lot of vibrations that occur and it may momentarily bounce off of the touch panel or it may not just have enough pressure. And it senses that there's no contact. And if the panel can't detect contact with the ball, then the system can't control the ball. And overall, that's just not very good for our system. There's also a lot of flat spots located on the ball that you can't see. Uh, so when you place it on the platform, it can get stuck near the equilibrium position. So it looks like it's reached steady state, but in reality, it's just stuck. And overall, it's just really choppy control. Uh, it can sometimes fly off or get stuck and then fling to one direction. And so it's just not very good. So as a result, we decided to use a stainless steel ball bearing instead. It's much heavier, uh, much smoother, and it just creates better contact with the touch panel. And because of this, uh, you can really see the control shine. So the first thing that's gonna happen when I start up this program is it's gonna enter a calibration state. So both of the motors will turn on and using the measurements from the IMU orient the platform so it's level. And then once the IMU detects that the platform is level, it zeroes out both of the encoders. And for the rest of the control, uh, the encoder positions are used instead of the IMU because the encoders are much more accurate um, and they have much better precision. And they're also not subject to a lot of noise that the IMU is, has uh, when there's a lot of vibrations in the system. So yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and start the system right here. And you'll see it enters this calibration state and it begins to level itself. So once it's leveled, you can see right here, uh, it enters a standby mode, so it's just controlling the position of the platform, uh, nothing else. So you can go ahead and touch the platform and there's a little bit of resistance there. But once you place the ball on the platform, um, it senses that there's contact and it starts to control the ball. Just like that. And here's a top down view. So you can see it remains relatively close to the center. Uh, there is a little bit of wobbling going on. Um, there's a variety of different factors that can cause that, such as controller gains, um, the timing of the tasks, uh, also the friction in the system, which I think is very important to note that there is a lot of friction in the system, especially in these ball joints right here and in the pulley system as well. So the motors have a lot of static friction that they must overcome. And after they break through that static friction, uh, they kind of overshoot just like that. Um, that could also be due to the fact that the ball is temporarily not in contact with the uh, system. Um, 
But overall, it's a pretty stable system. We can go ahead and perturb it a little bit. And you can see, it really doesn't care. Go ahead and move the ball directly itself too. And it's pretty stable. So we did implement full state feedback. However, we also implemented partial integral control. So with respect to the ball's position. So what that means is it's integrating the error that it senses with the ball's position. Um, we did this because we noticed there was a little bit of steady state error uh, without it. Um, so if the platform was calibrated in a non-level position, then the ball would constantly sit over here. Um, so because of this, you can actually place an object on the platform and the ball will return to the center. This also works if you slowly adjust the inclination of the platform as well, the ball will return to the center. So we can go ahead and take that off. See that it gets disturbed a little bit, but then it slowly returns to the center. We can go ahead and also pick the ball up and we see that the system goes back to being very stable. And we can place the ball in a different location and it returns back to the center as well. 